but I wanted to ask with in regards to Luxor just originally what what it was that attracted you to, to getting involved in this project there were um, a couple of factors um and, and Zena and I had collaborated before on the imperialists are still alive and I'm very aware of Zena's uh particular voice when it comes to um the Middle East, the way that she treats characters, the way that she draws stories that are layered and the way she uh, uh, draws from different wells and different sort of ideas when she works. And there's always a spiritual component, there's a comedic component, there's a political component. So I was, I'm, I'm always curious to read what Zena has written. And particularly when I, when I uh, read this script, I was immediately fascinated by the love story and I was also at the time um, interested in, in Jungian psychology and all the you know all the archetypes and the ideas of projections and so on and I thought that Egypt would be an amazing backdrop for, for that kind of thinking since a lot of the archetypes are taken from uh, the Egyptian pantheon um, and it was also a, a female driven film and it was a film about a woman um, who had suffered greatly uh, from participating in war uh, uh, as a doctor. And my mother runs a charity and works with children that are, um, that are affected by, by war. And so there were a lot, you know, there was a lot to interest me there. And there was a lot that I could identify with and recognize. And obviously, you know, as an actor, you always need that kind of trust. Uh, with your co-stars and director. I mean, obviously you've worked with Zayna before and I know I've, I was reading something that you mentioned you guys are friends. So it must help so much when you go onto a project and you already have that kind of established relationship with yourself and the filmmaker. And it's also, I mean, if you can imagine sort of Christmas with your family, you can bring up subjects that are a little bit more difficult and, and sometimes you can get deeper into things and it's more spontaneous. So it's, it's less there's less distance there's more intimacy um but that's also a great thing because it, it's conducive to the creative process and, and and it creates an openness and and an understanding even when it gets beautifully playful and passionate yeah and well, how because obviously you worked for her first project how how much has she sort of um changed as a filmmaker she was she the same zayna that you worked with the first time around or was she was did she seem like someone who'd very much making her second movie I think very, very much like an actor, Zena uh, knows how to work from her interests. And so whatever research she's done and wherever she was in her life, by then she was a mom. Uh, her baby was uh, on set with us, which was a wonderful presence. It, it, it brought a lot of energy to the set. Uh, her, mother, her motherhood and, and, and the child and the other two children being present um, not only ha not only did I feel that she had matured as a director, but I also thought that her interests were different. In Imperialist, she was living the life of an artist in New York, but here she was really looking at her identity as a woman in the context of conflict and through and exploring the process of recovery, the, the, the possibility to still love despite adversity, despite trauma, and etc. So I felt it, it was the same amount of depth and, and, and playfulness and thoughtfulness, but it was just a heavier subject. Yeah, and obviously, you know, it, it's as you mentioned, it is a very, it's very a story that was very important. Uh, that it's 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 about it's about female perspective and about a woman's experience in this situation. So it was great as well to have a female director tell it. But working with Andrea, I mean, what what she's one of those actresses. She's like a chameleon when I watch her in in stuff. She always I almost don't recognise her in any film she's in because she just becomes the character. It must have been a great thrill to to collaborate so closely with her on this project and, as well. And I think as, as as brilliant as uh, she is at embodying uh, characters and transforming and losing herself, I think that essentially is only symptomatic of what she's truly capable of doing, which is channeling the absolute truth of the inner life of the character. And the character that she played, Hannah, could have been, and it's not important if she were Middle Eastern or not, but seeing her feel things that I had witnessed women feel uh, having grown up in the war in Beirut 
um, I really recognized a lot of the emotions and a lot of the, the mannerisms and the energies of these women. So not only had she transformed herself, but she had also channeled something that was absolutely real. And I think that's the beauty of what she does. She, she works from the inside out, but perfectly. And I was reading that you only sort of met her a day before the shoot started. I mean, considering this is about two people that have a, so have this rich history together, how was that quite strange to kind of get started when you you didn't really know each other at all? Or how was it kind of adjusting to the characters when when you really only known her a day? When I saw Andrea for the first time, I I truly felt that I ha I was meant to meet her and that I had known her forever. And that feeling of familiarity kept being proved every step of the way. And we went to these beautiful temples and, and we had those experiences of being in, in ancient dark rooms together. And there was something outside of time about the set anyway. And it felt between us immediately that we were together outside of time. And there was an immediate you know, more than kinship. I mean, it was, it was, you know, uh, yeah, it was for the characters love at first sight almost, although they knew, you know, they'd known each other, but for me, the, the, the love welled up instantly. There was no period of adaptation there. Yeah. And what a beautiful place to shoot. It must've been. I mean, it, the, the, the look of the film is incredible. How was it to, to, to shoot in and around on location? It feeds you, it feeds you so much and it feeds you to the point where, you're almost doubting your own sanity because you start hearing statues whisper things to you. And, 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 and of course, you know, it, I'm not saying that we had hallucinations or anything, but we just allowed ourselves to be completely entranced by a place that was designed to be transcendental by, you know, by design it was. So we really allowed it to be what it was designed to be and experienced it the way it was meant to be experienced. Yeah, because there's a brilliant pacing to the film. It almost feels like we're wandering through the film slowly without necessarily much direction in the same way the characters are kind of wandering around. There's a real kind of slow holiday. It has a kind of holiday pace to it, which I love. Was that the case on set? Did it feel, I know obviously all movie sets are quite quick and fast paced mm -hmm. and you've got to do shit, but the, the, the feeling of the movie felt so serene in some ways. And I just wondered if, if the set was quite a calm set as, as film sets go it it was and it wasn't it, it was a, there was a lot to do in, in in very little time and we had a wonderful crew of uh um local uh workers in cinema who, who had a lot of skill but they were also educated in a very particular way they were you know they they have their own culture of how to do things and we all have different ways of doing things. But because of how serene the place was and because of how wonderful the story was and because how grounded in, 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 in psychology and emotion the story was, there was a balance there. So it never felt that all the technical stuff was ever spilling over or distracting us from what needed to really happen. Mm. And how important is Egypt as a backdrop to this movie? Because there seems that there's so much kind of richness to Egyptian kind of folklore and history. And it all felt it was really kind of subtly imbued into this narrative. Even just the whole notion of time, I thought, was very interestingly connected to ancient Egyptian kind of rules on time. I just wondered how important you think Egypt was and how, because uh, obviously I know it's a cliche when people say the character, the setting is like a, another character. But in this instance, yeah, New York or like, LA or Paris. Yeah. <laughs> well, e Egypt, ancient Egypt, I think, was the main character. And, and, and the key word is the word that you, you use, which is time. And, and I think because of that suspended aspect in the film, because of how introspective uh, Andrea's character, Hannah, is, there's almost this feeling that you are with her in, in her mind outside of time. And I think ancient Egypt is really designed to be timeless in that sense so that really carried and facilitated the the timeless aspect of it and the um, meditative aspect of it uh, Egypt as a country I don't know how much that permeated in uh, in the setting there were you know cab rides and boat rides and that created you know the the aspect that was the folklore but if you if you notice most of that was 
essentially linked to transportation. Uh, whenever we were settled, we were either settled in the Winter Palace, which is an old hotel that has its own sort of history and ghosts, and the tombs, you know, and the temples, and all of that is outside of time and sense. So the very particularity of Egypt was that it, it is somewhat universal because of how old it is and, and what, it, what ideas it was built around. Yeah, I forgot to ask, what were the statues whispering to you, by the way? Or, or do you not want to say? <laughs> there was a, we were allowed into a room that usually isn't really open for visitors. And there is an old goddess called Sekhmet. And later Sekhmet was depicted as a cat. But initially, in, in earlier periods of Egypt, she used to be depi depicted as a, as a lion. And Sekhmet is both a healer and a destroyer, an extremely powerful uh, female figure. And in that particular room, it was really interesting to, to feel the presence of the statue of Sekhmet. Yeah. And it was quite refreshing for me as an audience member to watch a film to come out of, you know, sort of North Africa in this instance, but also from the Middle East that wasn't too overtly political. It felt there was so there was lots of stuff to this. It was a romantic piece. It was about haunted memories and kind of uh, the present and the future. And there was lots of themes at play. But so often with movies set in those regions, it does feel like it has to be about warfare. Was it quite refreshing for you to get a screenplay that that wasn't a big a huge part of this movie. It was very much happening in the background. I always look out for two red flags, exploitation and self-orientalization. And exploitation is when you take something like war, like, you know, human misery or politics, and you turn it into something sensational because of course people are going to be interested. And there's a beautiful, elegant way of doing that, but it's not always the case. And the problem with self-orientalization is that sometimes people take aspects of their own culture and exaggerate them in order to create a demarcation difference, folklore, things like that. And I think Zena is way too elegant to fall into either those traps. And, and for me, it's, it's not just refreshing, it's, it's necessary. And it's something that I'm constantly looking for. So how's this uh, year been for you as an actor? Because obviously with your work, even just Luxor would have taken you to Egypt. You're constantly traveling and seeing the world and going to locations. Has it been, because oh, obviously the film industry effectively shut down for a, a number of months. How, how did you kind of adjust in that period? Did you quite enjoy some time at home or were you itching to get back onto a film set? Well, I feel like I've worked quite a bit uh, in the past six months. I've done a, a TV show with Julie Delpy, which was really fun. I was there for an episode, but it was a blast. I'm working on, on a movie right now in Montana, uh, directed by Amanda Kramer. Uh, you know, I've, I've done a couple of other things. The, the difficulty was to adjust to all the protocols with the COVID, the masks, the disinfecting, the, the social distancing, and so on. Um, the staying at home bit in between jobs was never difficult for me in the first place. I, I'm trying to learn the piano for a job that I have to, to do in, in either January or February, you know, in spring of next year. So I spent a lot of time reading, playing the piano, um, you know, spending time with, um, you know, people I love and, and learning how to cook. Uh, I think it's really easy to turn uh, the quarantine into a time to learn things and I enjoy that so I, I was just sort of learning things <laughs> yeah so what, what what's your what, have, you, have you got a signature dish that you're good at cooking yet um apparently <laughs> my scallops are very good, okay. good <laughs> I have an audience of one so <laughs> <laughs> according to the one person who loves my scallops my scallops are my best dish okay. <laughs> well when I've seen it on MasterChef it's always about getting the butter and scooping it over the fish while it's cooking <laughs> that's what I've seen on the telly um so my, my final question really then because I know I'm just coming up to time which is really what you've got coming up then you mentioned you're obviously shooting at the moment you're allowed to talk much about this particular project and when, when can we expect to see the, um, the, the series of Julie Delpy, if that, has that all been? Um, so the Julie Delpy series is still in the, uh, being shot. Um, I don't know anything about the release yet. What I'm doing right now is fascinating, but I, I'm too close to it to pitch it, really, because I'm really in the mindset of my character. 
uh, the director is called Amanda Kramer. It's going to be called Please Baby Please. I can tell you it's set in the, fif in the 50s and it's sort of beautiful surrealism. Uh, that's as much as I can divulge at the moment <laughs> without going into the inner monologue of my character. <laughs> well, beautiful surrealism. I've, you've sold it <laughs> to me. So that sounds great. Uh, well, anyway, but I know obviously you're, you're on, you're shooting at the moment. So I should probably let, get, let you get back to it. But thanks so much for your time today. It's been a Thank real you. pleasure speaking to you. And best of luck with everything you've got coming Thank up. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!